is Cambodia. Where are you now? Uh, Vietnam. So our first week in Cambodia was in Phnom Penh. Uh, about 4Ks out we stayed at this little local place where as you can see it was manic. Um, there were food stalls everywhere, uh, there was fruit and veg just outside and meat hanging around. It was a definite eye opener and a sensory uh, load to get used to um, but it was pretty cool. Um, the whole area is pretty impoverished to be honest um, even though we we're very close to the main city where we were staying we were right by a river and I cannot describe to you how bad it smelled it was unreal the concern this tuk tuk here that there's kind of um, cages around uh, the guy who we were staying with had actually had his cell phone stolen for I think it was about four times um, since he had been there so we couldn't film a lot with our gimbal we had to kind of keep our cell phones inside so yeah the waterways were unreal, like coming from New Zealand where we've got algae and stuff and it's a problem to straight up dumped rubbish everywhere and potentially sewage, we're not 100% sure but definitely we had to peg our nose almost every time we crossed this bridge because it was an assault to the sensor. It, it almost makes me want to dry reach now. It was so full on. The poverty that's in Cambodia is a direct result of the Khmer Rouge regime. We went to the killing fields um, and saw firsthand the just the devastation um, the lives lost. It was about 25% of the population, so it was huge. The political situation now, the, it's a democracy, and I'll put that in brackets. Um, some of the leaders were actually part of the Khmer Rouge, so you can imagine how um, democratic it really is. So yeah, pretty hard to deal with, um, and it does have a real sense of an impoverished nation. We went to the waterfront for one of the nights, and again, you see that contrast that like you do in any part of the world where there's deep poverty, deep seated poverty, and then there's wealth. So this is a palace, the palace there, the streets are beautiful. Um, it was just a really nice time, clean. A crazy thing that happened here, which I think will be one of the biggest memories that the kids will ever have, was the fact that we went across to the water, um, sat and had some food there, and as we were walking down around there, there were these two little boys sitting on some steps, and I mean little, we're talking six year olds, having a ciggy, just having a little smoko break. My kids were mouths open, could not comprehend that this was happening, and to be fair, neither could we. It was just nuts, it was like something so out of this world, like six year olds having a quick fag. Uh, Brian tried these spiders, mmm. What spider is that? How much, that much? So our next destination and the reason why we went to Cambodia in the first place was to visit Angkor Wat in Siem Reap. We spent two weeks here um, at a beautiful little place called Huck's Boutique. Um, it was owned by Huck and his family. The breakfasts were cooked every day by the family. It was a little oasis in the middle of quite um, impoverished area, I guess you could say. We also found an awesome little cafe there which we became really friendly with the owner Malay and her beautiful family um, and we ended up spending quite a bit of time with them and having the privilege of getting to understand a little bit of the culture, understand a little bit of what uh, they're going through, the struggles that it is life in Cambodia for them, you know, it was uh, their lives have all been impacted by the Khmer Rouge and so um, yeah, the nation is suffering, but man, they're beautiful. This little kitty cat here, like all cats in Cambodia, does not have a long tail. Genetics. Local cows. Not quite as chubby as the wee dairy cows that we have back home. In fact, chubby's not the right, right word at all. Anemic, but I actually think it might be the breed of cow. Good morning. 
Do you understand my English? Have a great day. Our time in Samurai was super varied. Each morning we would go past uh, this temple. It's actually also a cemetery, so the cremated rains would go into those little towers, and once they were full, um, they would be closed off. Not necessarily just your family, it would be uh, others in the community as well. All around the outside of this temple was sort of a reminders of um, what happened during the Khmer Rouge. So one very graphic one, um, which we just thought was full on, was ravens actually eating someone's intestines. So very varied, because then we would head to Pub Street in the night, um, which was completely removed from Cambodian culture, let's be honest. Um, it was very European and made for Europeans with massage places everywhere. Great food though. We took a French family who had uh, come and stayed at the same place as us. We went there with them. We also had um, another time when we met some uh, English, an English couple that we stayed, we've stayed in contact with and we had dinner with them and they're also um, vloggers so it was cool just getting to know a bit about how they've gone along. Um, Pub Street yeah has that whole vibe I mean there's one of these in every city right it's just a cranking area we were quite early so it doesn't look super busy but it does get busy. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen these fish massages before but these ones were pretty big like I'm sure in Bali they were like little and cute these guys were kind of decent. I was keen because my feet were feeling very hard and sore but they weren't really interested in my feet they just focused on Brian's. Riley uh, tried it a little bit was a bit creeped out Harvey managed to dip his toe in every now and then um, so yeah that was Pub Street it was a bit of an experience absolute highlight for me was the Apopa Museum which is a land demining uh, organization that uses rats to locate and uh, find little mines and then they get taken and removed um, without loss of human life essentially because the rats are too light so um, they don't set off the mines when they find them and it means that uh, they can clear a field quite effectively um, without any loss of life as I said so they just go up there they've been taught with clickers and food and when they find um, a mine they stop and they scratch and then they move on to the next and they take a marker so there's a um, measuring tape that measures exactly where it is they mark it and they continue on and they can, can clear fields quite quickly um, they are humongous so they're not your normal size rats uh, they are African rats I think they're called they are so cute they have to have um, some block on their ear I think on their nose or the ears and their tail because their tail is white but yeah they're very smoochy if you don't like rats you're not going to like them but oh man I was in love um, one of them found a bit of I think salt on Brian's arms we'll call it salt we'll also call it sweat and so he was giving him a little lick but yeah very smoochy doing an amazing job so very stoked to be able to visit those little guys so cute one of the evenings we had the privilege to go out with Malay uh, the woman who owns the cafe and her son Sakura on to the a boat which took us out to a floating village so these villages live on the water all year round there's a school uh, out there and yeah they go shopping by people coming up with their little um, boats and giving them you know purchasing from there or they can go back onto land so pretty full on like it's a different way of living for sure uh, watching these kids swim in this water and bathe in this water and I guess everything in this water it was yeah next level um, different as you can see the water's not super clean <laughs> so yeah not too sure about that in the middle of this place was a random little crocodile uh, sanctuary type thing. It was sketchy in New Zealand standards, like there was not a lot protecting you from them in the sense that the floorboards didn't feel that secure, they were big mamas. There was one which was the same age as me or just, just a little few months younger, um, but yeah they were humongous, Riley was keen to get back on land. So yeah this is just in the middle of this lake which looked like an ocean, it's so massive, apparently it's the biggest uh, lake in Asia and it was literally there's you cannot see the side of it for where, from where we are where it was humongous spending time with Sakura Bore in Malay was such a privilege um, Sakura hadn't done much swimming before we also took him to Pub Street and that boat ride that we took he also hadn't ever done that before so yeah I mean they own their own business so taking time away from their work meant they were taking away from their income so yes it was a serious privilege that we got to spend time with them and experience a bit of what Cambodia is like for them as well in their everyday so yeah real privilege
so we finally made it to Angkor Wat. It was astoundingly beautiful, like crazy beautiful. We, the time of day we went there, we still had a kind of misty look to it, so it was really cool. Um, unfortunately, our family had a really hard day that day. It was just not a winning day. <laughs> Uh, the kids sucked, they had such crappy attitudes, me and Brian didn't go well discussing that and it was just all full on. So my memories of Angkor Wat are going to be kind of tainted by that. Um, the next day however we went to more of the temples in the area and it was just superb. The kids had an attitude adjustment, we hired a driver for the time and it was just really really cool. Like cool family time, really soaking in the um, I guess the history of it all so it was awesome so a few more shots of the different temples and while we're doing that I will talk you through our finances because you know that's what you're here for so um we thought that Cambodia would be significantly cheaper than Vietnam um obviously because the economy is not so good but um we still spent uh similar amounts actually so our food and accommodation uh sorry our food and cash outs were about 200 dollars a week more than what we had wanted so we were wanting to sit around about 600 dollars and ended up being about 800 that also includes stuff like anchor watt and things like that but yeah even so it was um slightly up there so the accommodation in total was about 1700 dollars our food and cash out was about 1000 uh, sorry 3100 dollars so yeah um in terms of our debt um our first up our income so our income was down it wasn't as down as much as christmas but it was still below average so um as expected you're not going to be paying off that much debt um but our total debt starting out in november um has reduced so in november it was ninety four thousand eight hundred and forty three it's reduced to seventy three thousand five hundred and ten um and so during our time in cambodia we reduced that debt by about 4,600 so pretty good not as much as we would be hoping for we've got some things coming up in the near future we've had a lot of new business which we didn't have over those few months um, and we've got some particular big business coming through so we really hope to make um, some more headway and I think we definitely will um, we're excited about it we we're not deterred at all um, it's slower than what we wanted but hey uh, we're still making it happen and we're still stoked with where we're at. I think we need to focus again a bit more on just yeah, what we're spending each week because 200 over budget each week is a bit sucky so we really need to um, focus in on that. But yeah, overall we're pretty stoked about um, how well it went. Just a quick comment here, this is the ruins up the top, what they look like and that's the reconstruction. So as you can see, yeah, you don't have to use your imagination. There was some imagination <laughs> used to putting things together, but I guess they tried to stay as true as they could um, to, I guess, the examples that are around and were in uh, good state as well. So yeah, that is our time in Angkor Wat in Cambodia. It was pretty precious spending time with some families uh, that we got to know. So yeah, really cool time. Can you say kakite? Kakite no. No, that's afternoon.